My wrists still hurt from the cuffs, says Eddie Vaughn. I'm 31. Eddie Vaughn and I barely know each other yet. We haven't wreaked mutual havoc for the two screamingly long years we're together. We're on a blind date at the Cafe Tropical Cuban coffee shop in Silver Lake, when it still had waitresses with gold teeth and teased hair. Eddie has a fresh cafe con leche. He tears open a packet of sugar, dumps it in, then a second packet, third, fourth. I'm mesmerized by the motion, the white grains, the excess. One sugar makes a Chevy. It takes five to make a Cadillac, he says, grinning. What Jamie tell you about me? That you were an amazing painter and a real man with testosterone to spare. She tell you I'm a convicted felon? Are you kidding? I have two strikes, worst ones for armed robbery, mostly convenience stores for smack money. With eyes lowered, I attempt to hide the surprise. I thought this man was a sensitive, passionate painter. Now I know he's an armed robber and a former heroin addict. Any kids, I ask? I have a daughter, Debbie. I named her after Rukmini Devi Arundal, stunning dancer from India. He guzzles the leche, wipes the coffee from his lips, which I notice are not only full, but somehow lasciviously so. Now here's a story. Her mother, Kristen, looked exactly like Scarlett Johansson when I met her. She was 14. I blink. Eddie looks pleased, utterly confident. She's the daughter of this former guru. Kristen had a bit part in this play I painted the backdrop for. He pauses. I am hanging on the words. She got pregnant. No way I was going to jail for statutory rape, so I took her on a Greyhound bus to New York City. She had Debbie when she was 15. 15? I choke out. Her parents approved, Eddie says airily. They're more enlightened than these uptight Puritan Americans. I wonder whether Kristen is the youngest girl he's ever slept with. Then I think about what would have happened if I'd met this man when I was a young teen. At that moment, I imagine I can feel his body warmth radiating from across the table. There is something commanding about this man, even though at first sight, I wasn't impressed. Now after an hour, I can't take my eyes off him, nor can I stop listening. His confidence, intelligence, and seductiveness are intoxicating. Why were you arrested last month? I'm thinking about his wrists bound by cuffs, imagining the metal cold and clamped around his skin. Some stupid clerical error, an old warrant from over a decade ago. He tells me how he spent two nights in jail. I can't stop glancing at his muscular left arm with its tattooed sleeve. He, in turn, sneaks glances at my chest. I can feel him stripping me naked in his mind. Even then, I felt Eddie was a true outlaw. I sensed he could offer entree into a world of abandon, unlike anything I'd known. A world of intrigue and darkness. Looking back, I recognized beneath the romanticizing lurked an ancient pattern of responding to men with secrets. You should know I still live with my ex, he said. It's just for convenience. Also, I'm moving to Thailand in a month. I didn't expect to meet anyone. A few weeks later, he will move out of his ex's house and basically live in his car. I will ferry him and his 12-year-old daughter around town. Some months later, he will be back in LA from Thailand, making half a million dollars creating commissioned artwork for various celebrities and power brokers. Much of this new commission he will blow on hookers, exotic pets, costly watches, custom-made clothes, travel, gambling, and pharmaceutical strength coding. But I won't know that, because while I'm attracted to the double life I sense he lives, Eddie will keep it separate and secret until the end of us.